Okay. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Okay. So I'm starting now. So yeah, uh, my name is Baek Ung Jae, uh, and I'm a writer, first of all. And Dr. Baek introduces all five of my published work. Thank you for that. And if you have any um, questions, you are free to ask me after this lecture. And uh, I'm also a master sommelier of Hanju. Uh, so I used to run a Hanju restaurant called Sebal Jajongo. Uh, uh, I was owner sommelier of Sebal Jajongo. And I was judge of national makgeolli contest uh, hosted by Ministry of Food and Agriculture. And also judge of national Hanju sommelier contest, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm now cooking, uh, not in a professional way, but I cook every day. So I live in uh, a small town called Jumunjin. Um, and this is actually the biggest fishing port in East Coast of Korea. So I'm really indulging into this uh, abundant uh, seafood uh, and do this with this local ingredients. I'm making unique, unique to Jumunjin dishes every day. And I'm trying to make it zero waste in my kitchen, which is next to impossible, but very rewarding because you can make a small progress every day. So I also nowadays a code scripter. Uh, I'm, I'm learning coding uh, and um, want to develop kind of NFT uh, technology for publishing. And I'm also a traveler in professional way. So yeah, that's uh, it of my introduction. And oh, in this background um, picture of my presentation, you can see some people from ANU on the right side, in the middle. You can see them. They were PhD students uh, like five, six years ago. Yeah. Okay, that's it about myself and um, I'm interested in Hanju today. The Hanju has been a life-changing experience for me. So I used, I was a lover of alcoholic drink as anyone else in this group. Mm, but well, when I was in college, uh, that's like 30 years ago, I didn't drink much of Korean drink because they were no good. So yeah, you probably have some of the no good thing today too. And uh, you probably have experienced the soju in the green bottle. I'm sorry uh, about inventing that kind of very bad alcoholic uh, drink. Yeah, but we are making some much better things now. And that's what I'm introducing to you. So. This word hanj, uh, I invented myself uh, this word hanju. So what is han? So everyone knows han, you know, Korean is called hanguk. So that means Korean, but it, uh, it's originally a, a, a word rooted in Altai language uh, in Siberian uh, region. So it means great. It means king, bright, things like that. So you have heard of Genghis Khan, yeah? But this Khan is the same word with Han. So Genghis Khan means the, the, the great, strong king. So, yeah. So this Han uh, means something, anything very good, bright, uh, and anything Korean. So, because I'm interested in the traditional Korean things, uh, I'm calling this Hanju. Yeah, so Hanju is in short, Korean traditional drink. And obviously there are more. So yeah, uh, in the picture you have seen Blackpink. Everyone knows Blackpink, right? Yes. So yeah. in the new album last year, 
they wear this kind of uh, modernized Hanbok, Korean costumes and uh, a huge uh, success for them. So now I'm introducing a brief history of Hanjo. So the Korean people are known for drinking culture, known for good brewing skill. So it is recorded by uh, Chinese history books. So yeah, uh, so you are seeing some Chinese characters here. So, uh, the first line reads Chahi Sonyang, which means the Chinese people describe Korean as they are so self-content with their own brewing skill. They are so happy when they have their own uh, root drinks. And that's one description about uh, Korean people in ancient age. Mm, the second line uh, reads, which means it's a, a line of poem by very famous Chinese poet in Tang Dynasty. Tang Dynasty. Uh, he says, I'm afraid this uh, spirit of Shilaju. Shilla is another name of Korea in that age. Shilaju is vanishing away with the dawn. So he drank through the dawn and um, he probably came out for a, a toilet or something and he you know, he uh, faced this fresh morning air and he was afraid, oh, it's such a good drink. And um, this fruit is vanishing away with this dawn spirit, uh, dawn fresh air. Well, I'm kind of, you know, uh, afraid that. Yeah, so we can say uh, Korea, uh, the, one of the images of the Korean people uh, it's about drinking or alcohol something. And uh, not only alcohol, we also have uh, strong drinking culture. Yeah, of course we drink a lot. And uh, when we drink, we used to sing and dance. That's also recorded in history books. And um, food is indispensable. I mean, so, Every language I know, uh, the eating and drinking are two different verbs. Okay? So you don't eat beer in English. You always drink beer. And in Japanese, uh, tabe, taberu is eating. So nomu is drinking. They two do not mix uh, the when when it comes to drinking, it's always nomu. And in Chinese, yeah, people say um, so, he jiu, chi fan. So it's two different things. But in Korean, you say sul mongnanda, pap mongnanda. So it's the same word you, you use. So I guess um, a part of the reason is uh, that we always drink with food. So we do not have traditional culture of drinking just the drink alone. So no matter how small, there must be a something uh, accompanied, the food. Yeah, that's one of the uh, characteristics of Korean drinking culture. And uh, we also have family brewing tradition up until very recently, like a century ago, so every family uh, who can afford to have their own family drink. So we probably have hundreds of thousands um, different kinds of uh, drinks countrywide. Uh, so we are very popular with drinking. We made and drank a lot. But there was a period um, of decline of Hanju. So it happened to be coincide with Japanese occupation. So before Japanese occupation, 
uh, it is not a kind of modern state, which means uh, the taxation, regulation, legislation was uh, not as, as strong as modern states. So family could brew their own drinks because there was no, no such thing like license, taxation whatsoever. So it's like, uh, uh, but in Western societies, you know, all the famous old boys are from the monastery, right? Because uh, the local government, local rulership, and the, the, the church, the other federal rulership of the region uh, has that kind of agreement. So you allow me uh, to brew things and we pay tax and we don't allow common people to do this. It's strictly regulated and tax, uh, taxed. So uh, the family brewing tradition has all gone in Western societies, but we had this tradition until you know, early 20th centuries. But after that uh, introduction of taxation license, yes, obviously rules have decreased dramatically. And we also uh, did a foreign competitors like beer, wine, things like that, whiskey or whatever. Uh, and one of the reasons of this declination or decline uh, is uh, Korean, Korean uh, alcohol is a live culture. It's something alive. So, Mm, when I say this, uh, people are at a loss. Uh, what does it mean? So, for example, uh, I know before we say some example, uh, it's fermented by microorganism, right? So, uh, in every bottle of makgeolli, for example, if it's not otherwise uh, uh, processed, it's something alive. The microorganisms are still there uh, doing their activities. So it changes over time, not necessarily a bad way, but it could go wrong, uh, especially when you do not have cold chain supply infrastructure. A century ago, we didn't have that. Even a half a century ago, we barely had that. So there's regulation that a certain area has to deal with certain breweries in the region, kind of that kind of regulation. So if I was in Seoul, you know, it's a big city, so it has big market, but we only had one or two breweries uh, for Makkali, just like that. Mm. And um, so in that way, uh, Hanju was degraded from cultural goods to basic consumption commodity. So what happens uh, with this regulation is, so this is my territory from a rural's point of view. And I cannot go over this, no matter how I'm good. And um, this territory is, is protected by law. So if I want to make money, I do not have to do better. But I can save money by, you know, using cheap ingredients, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it has degraded from, you know, uh, for searching for excellent thing to a making money, uh, cheap things. So obviously, uh, from some time, uh, the Korean drink Hanju has dec uh, declined to a like. Uh, less than 10% of the whole uh, alcohol beverage market. So it has turned recently. So <clears throat> I'm talking about this, this uh, uh, turning tide a little later. Um, I'm explaining a bit about the brewing method. So you are seeing this uh, diagram here. So sorry about the Korean. I couldn't find anything in English. So, so uh, on upper row in, in sky blue color, uh, on the far right, uh, it was alcohol. And on the 
in the middle is sugar, and to the left is grain. Uh, in the bucket is starch. So you are making alcohol with a uh, uh, with the activity of microorganism. So uh, in the lower lower row, uh, you can see humor yeast. It was yeast. And uh, to the next is uh, enzyme. So alcohol is made by yeast from sugar. So sugar eats, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> the yeast is sugar and uh, make alcohol and uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, so in case of wine, the grape, it's made of sugar, the simple sugar, and the yeast can eat this sugar and make alcohol. That's great wine, simple. But in case of grain, uh, it's grain, the starch is the polymer of sugars. So it's a big uh, and a kind of chained sugar uh, uh, molecular. So we need enzyme to break this down to simple sugar. So we have two uh, different procedures to make alcohol from rice or any other uh, grain. So as uh, this fermentation agent, uh, we had a nuru. So we are seeing nuru, let's see. Yeah, uh, so in, in upper right side, that's nuru. Uh, yeah. This uh, something like uh, egg. Uh, this is group. This is fermentation agent. So they have both uh, enzyme and yeast in there. Mm. So the different, uh, the difficult thing about making hanju is the enzyme and yeast uh, are active in very different situation. So this enzyme needs something like tropical um, climate. The hot and humid weather is good for them. While the yeast is gonna die out uh, if it's above 28, 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, so using nuruk as fermentation agent is very challenging job. And uh, obviously it's less efficient. Uh, but it's uh, more rewarding because uh, it's fermented in the nature. So there are not only enzyme and uh, yeast, but also some other uh, small group of uh, microorganism from the particular environment. And that uh, groups of small organisms do something when making uh, the alcohol. That gives the special unique flavor of the particular place, the particular season. So that's uh, what is beautiful about uh, the hanju. So, <clears throat> so I told you uh, the decline of hanju has turned uh, in different direction. So nowadays is very popular and kind of uh, almost hipster culture in Korea uh, because people have found a, a value uh, from here, from, from Hanju. Mm. So there are hundreds of new brewers, breweries every year from like 2018, literally every hundreds of new brewers open mostly by young people. Uh, so it's very small scale uh, artisan product. So they are very unique uh, and um, have the, the, the showing some, you know, some values of the generation. So young people uh, like it because, not because it's traditional, uh, but because it's um, representing their own generation and culture and because it's good. So yeah, and uh, these small brewers uh, typically use local ingredients 
uh, partly because of legislation. So, you know, the taxation uh, in some cases is quite heavy, like the gene we are having uh, later today uh, has 72% of tax, plus, plus, plus something. Uh, but if you use the local ingredients and then you are registered to some kind of local product, uh, the tax reduced to half, like 36%. So that's something uh, very important. Financially, it's very important in the market uh, for the consumers. Um, so they, they use the local products. And uh, as I told you, it's really, really difficult to uh, use Nuruk for fermentation agents because you know of the uh, the different uh, uh, environment for the different agents, uh, and it because it's something alive, it changes over time. So no single water is the same. So if you let's say if you buy a a box a case of the makkali at the same time, um, yeah, probably the, the same uh, when they come out from the brewery. But if you put it in the refrigerator and uh, you open this one today and uh, three days later you open second, and then a week later you open the third and so on, it tastes all different every time. It's always unique experience. Uh, so, yeah, so that's one of the reasons uh, why is it so popular among younger generation. So we, older generation have this kind of perception. When it comes to consumer good, the consistency is the most important value. Somehow people think about, even think about food in that way, but uh, to make this consistency, you have to use something like, you know, chemical additive, um, preservatives, uh, and other ways of, you know, making nothing very equal to equal. So, uh, young people think differently nowadays. Yeah. So, Hanju is a Korean drink, I told you, but actually it is not. So the reason I uh, use this prefix Han is actually to emphasize that it's not really uh, uniquely Korean. So on the right side, uh, upper left, you are seeing some, you know, some jars. So this is uh, southeast of China, uh, and it was Niji, rice wine. Um, yeah, this is a small, uh, very old, 200 something years old uh, Chinese brewery making uh, Huangjiu or Xiaoxingjiu. Uh, that's kind of rice, uh, this is rice wine, but I would say rice beer is uh, technically a better way to describe this. Anyway, yeah, it's, this is a Chinese, Southern Chinese something, uh, upper right, uh, this is Nuru from Cambodia. Uh, and uh, down, uh, it's a brewery, uh, painting of brewery uh, of uh, like 200 years ago. It's, uh, uh, it's a painting from Japan. So you can see quite a few people are working in the same place at the same time. Uh, it's reasonably uh, scaled up uh, from you know, the family brewing. So you can see, so this kind of uh, you know, rice brewing is common heritage of our rice cultivating culture. And uh, so using this uh, nuruk and uh, seeing this uh, not as a product, but uh, as a unique experience is a uh, our Asian future. So people didn't have the technology to make everything uniform and it was uh, given, it was for granted uh, that 
everything, every bowl of rice, every you know bowl of kimchi, every bottle of makgeolli, it's all a uh, unique experience. Okay. So I think that's the kind of uh, uh, a way of a part of our lifestyle is becoming. And uh, okay, let's have a little interesting video. Uh, from Cambodia. All right. Okay. Can you see the video? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Is uh, it's traditional Cambodian alcoholic drink. <laughs> and this man who is tasting now is very famous mask brewer in Korea. Okay, uh, so it was in 2019. Android app came out. Okay, can you see the, the presentation? No. No? Screen share, okay. Okay, just a second. Okay, you can see now, right? Yes. So yeah, we were lacking uh, at the start because we're in an awkward position. The tradition of the people, uh, they are a small ethnic group in the, um, residing near the border of uh, Laos. Um, they have this tradition of brewing and then sharing that with one, you know, that straw. So we are in some kind of awkward position. We all had to share this one straw. Mm. And then the second one, who is a master brewer and a teacher of all these young, not all, but yeah, many of these young uh, brewers, teacher uh, said, oh, it's just like, um, you know, Hanju. A little bit older Hanju. So yeah, we actually experienced the the commonness uh, and the sharing uh, heritage of rice cultivating culture there. That's what I want to say. It's not uniquely Korean. Oh, so it's uh, yeah, just one step before the long-awaited tasting session. So I want to. Uh, talk about how to taste uh, the, the basic method. So when you start, you have to use your eyes. 
so that if there's no uh, contamination, no insect, and uh, you can, you know, if you're familiar with that particular drink, you can evaluate this with this color. I told you it's unique every time. Sometimes the color or the uh, uh, kind of, you know, the thickness can give you some clue about this uh, current status of this drink. And then nosing, you use nose. And for some professional taster, nosing is the single most important part. So some whiskey uh, master uh, blender or taster, they hardly drink because if they had to, that's too much for them. So they nose it over time. Uh, uh, with the contact uh, with the oxygen, uh, it changes. Like, you know, uh, the wine is the same, everything the same. When it uh, contacts with oxygen, it begins to change in some way, good or bad. And you can give it some time to, you know, to make it breathe by uh, using the wine terminology. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, you can feel uh, typically uh, in makgeolli, you can feel some kind of fruit or flowery, sweetness and sourness. You can all feel this with your nose. And you taste this with your mouth. Mm, yeah, don't, don't hurry. Uh, so take your time in your mouth and uh, again, it changes uh, because of your temperature and uh, your, your things in your mouth. And uh, you, you can see how it changes and you can decide which status is your favorite status or which status is the best with your um, dish before you, things like that. And uh, I'd like to ask you to make habit of uh, recording something. So on the right side, this is my uh, tasting note in my blog. Uh, so I take pictures of the, you know, the bottles. Uh, actually, there are more than th these two. But yeah, I take pictures. Uh, and on the right side, uh, the first, first part is about the basic, you know, uh, information typically on the label. So it's almost like writing down the labels. So the how, how uh, much alcoholic volume is, uh, how big is this bottle? Uh, what is this bottle made of? And what's the additive if ever? And uh, is it uh, pasteurized or just, you know, the live culture, and then if it is live, live culture, how long before the uh, best, best before day, things like that. And then the next column uh, is you know, the information about brewery, the name, the uh, address, uh, the SNS or homepage, uh, if they have, and then uh, there's four elements uh, of the taste. So in the case of Makoli, it depends on the, the category. So if you uh, taste sweet, it is a little bit different, but for Makoli, it's about the sourness, then uh, sweetness, and then the, the thickness, and then the uh, how flirty, how uh, much oxidization, no, no, sorry, uh, carbon dioxide is there, something like that. And the last one is your comment. So, yeah, so it's uh, about your personal feeling, about something, whatever you want to make. And uh, so the Japanese wine cartoon, Shine uh, Mulbang, is very popular in Korea. And uh, the people, uh, the characters in the Cartoon describes the wine so beautifully that it's kind of, you know, uh, a cultural meme in the wine lovers. Um, it doesn't have to be like that, but personally, if I find a, 
a certain uh, tasting was so good. Uh, it tends to be longer and more, you know, artful about the description. Okay, so this is your, if you are uh, interested in uh, enjoying, or right, more than just uh, Catherine, from, uh, if you uh, just a little bit interested in studying, uh, in any subject and then drinking, I certainly recommend you to write to your own tasting room. And the format is not a, not just this, so it's up to you. And there are many, many forms that you can refer to, including wines and whiskeys. So yeah, this is a uh, tasting session. 